Hi guys, Andrew here from GarageFarm.net Academy. In this tutorial, I will show you how to prepare 3ds Max settings and customize user interface for modeling architecture. Some of these settings are necessary for working with architectural drawings and some will make your work faster and more comfortable. So let's go. So I will start with setting the scene units. Here is my empty 3ds Max scene. The first thing I need to do is setting up the units I'm going to work with. I want to create a photorealistic visualization, so I need to work with real units. I go to customize, unit setup and system unit setup. And here I have the system unit scale. 3ds Max will use these units for internal calculations of geometry and distances in my scene. They will also be a reference for rescaling models imported from other 3ds Max scenes or software like Archicad, for example. It's important that I set these units accordingly to the scale of objects I'm going to work with. So for example, I shouldn't set them as millimeters if I'm modeling an object 10 kilometers wide. This is because computers have problems with calculating very big numbers and very small decimals. So when they get very long, I can experience problems with working in the viewport and rendering. I can check the accuracy of the units here, but I'm not going deep into settings of this little calculator. You can check how it works in 3ds Max help. For modeling architecture, centimeters or inches are fine. I will set my units to centimeters. Another important thing is that system units shouldn't be changed after I create or import any object. It can cause problems with accuracy of models and distances in my scene. At some point I may move from modeling the main architecture features to modeling little construction details or modeling the site plan. In this case I will probably work with drawings measured in different units like meters or millimeters. To make my work easier I can just change the display unit scale. Right now it's set to meters but I can change it to centimeters, inches or any other unit. I can change display unit scale back and forth as I like with no consequences because these settings won't affect the system unit scale. I'm going to model a building using architectural drawings as references so I will constantly switch between different views. I don't want to click on the view cube all the time or choose views from the viewport list, so I will use hotkeys. As you can see, the hotkeys for different views are listed here, but they are missing for the bottom, back and right view. So I will add the missing hotkeys in Customize Hotkey Editor. In older versions of 3ds Max, you can set them in Customize, Customize User Interface, Keyboard. I need to choose some letters and almost all of them are taken right now, so I may need to steal a letter from other hotkeys which I'm not going to use. Here I can choose between searching for hotkeys and actions. I can check what other actions are using a given hotkey if I click hotkeys and type the hotkey in this field. For example, O is linked to adaptive degradation option in the main user interface. So I will click on actions again, look for these three views and assign hotkeys to them. For bottom view, I input O as a hotkey and click remove the adaptive degradation toggle. I won't need it for this project and I click assign. For back view, I will use B. It is not used by any action in main user interface. For right view, I will use semicolon. I couldn't find any good letter for it, but it's just next to the left view hotkey, so I think it will be easy to remember it. Since I'm going to model architecture, 3ds Max Measure tool may come in handy. It's located in Tools Measure, so when I use it I choose two points and I get distance in display units. It shows in left bottom corner of Max interface. I will set Shift plus back quote as a hotkey for it. Another thing that I want to do is to add a hotkey for convert to edit double poly action. I'm going to use it a lot and without a hotkey I would need to click a lot in the viewport or on the modifier stack. So I type the command name on the action list and I add D letter. It's not used by any action in the main user interface. It will speed up my work a lot. And when I'm done with setting up the hotkeys I can save them to a file 
so I can use them later in similar project. I will need precision in my modeling, so I will use snaps all the time. Now I will configure them. I right click on the snaps icon and here I tick off the grid points because I'm not going to snap to the grid, but I turn on vertex. And in options I turn on snap to frozen objects and enable axis constraints. The frozen objects will be my reference images, so I don't want to move them by mistake. Also I don't like the default reference coordinate system setting, which is remembered per every type of transformation, like move or rotate, so there is a need to constantly change it. I will set a constant reference coordinate system in preferences, so it will stay the same no matter if I change the action from move to scale for example. I will customize my general graphic user interface. I start from default max template. From the main user interface I turn off everything except my toolbar, command panel and scene explorer. But I will add axis constraints bar. Sometimes it comes in handy when constraints don't want to work automatically when I use snaps. I also turn off the view cube, I'm not going to use it and I add layer explorer. I can group it with the scene explorer and click through them. I'm going to use some modifiers very often, so I will set them as quick buttons. I click show buttons and click on configure modifier sets. There are many sets of modifiers here. I will take one and override it with my buttons. I save them as a new list and they are visible. The grayed out ones are the ones which I can't use with the currently selected object. And the last thing, I will go to customize and log user interface layout, so I won't undock any element by mistake. Now I want to save my customizations. Unfortunately, 3ds Max doesn't have a single button which would save all of them. The first group of settings is saved in Inu folder. When you quit 3ds Max, they are automatically saved and then loaded when you open Max again. The Inu folder is located in this path. Other settings are saved in 3ds Max scene. If I want to keep the customizations for new scenes, I need to save them in Max Start Max scene. I can save a new Max Start scene with my setup from scratch or override the existing one. It's located in this path. If I want to revert to default settings but keep my customizations for later, I just add any suffix to max start scene and inu folder, like backup for example. When you open 3ds Max again, it will create a new inu folder with default settings. It will also load a default scene since there is no max start scene in the path where it should be located. So now I'm back to 3ds Max default settings. And now if I want to go back to my custom setup, I just delete the new default inu folder and remove the suffixes from my backup folder and backup max start scene. And I have my custom user interface again. So that was rough but simple method. I can also save my user interface settings from 3ds Max itself. The first way is to go to manage workspaces and click on save as new workspace with a name you want. And then you can choose between your workspaces and default one as you need. The list of user interface elements which you can save is limited to these. In this tutorial I only modified toolbars. So for example here I have ArcViz modeling workspaces 1 and 2 which differ only by axis constraints toolbar. I can switch between them in real time. The second place where you can save user interface settings is in Customize Save Custom User Interface Scheme. It has a slightly different list of elements to save than the workspaces but the common one is the toolbar setup. Also you need to restart 3ds Max after loading the user interface for changes to take effect. And the third place is in Customize Custom Default Switcher. It offers user interface presets in a similar fashion to workspaces. You can also load your saved custom user interface from there. Just make sure that the user interface files you saved are copied to this path. This is where 3ds Max stores its default user interface setup. As you can see this system is quite complicated and I'm not fond of it. This is why I always make sure that I have a backup of max start scene and inu folder with my settings saved so I can load them anytime I need. For me it's much simpler solution. Here is a table with paths and files where 3ds Max save settings I modified in this tutorial. Okay that's it. I hope you will find this setup useful when modeling architecture. 
If you have any questions, please ask them in comments, I will be happy to answer. Check other tutorials on our channel and if you want to see more, click subscribe. See you in the next one.